feel like a bumblebee wearing red and blue. Red? Yellow and black. <sighs> Why is it that the first sentence out of my mouth, like every stream, is me just tripping over myself? Why is uh why is it gotta be like that, you know? That's my question. Anyway, it's like I can't tell if I'm cold or hot today. <laughs> it's just it just is. Um what I really need is just a, a long sleeve shirt, I suppose. But um, I'm wearing this one because I went out to dinner with a friend of mine, and uh, it's a it's a good shirt. I like it a lot. Um, I don't know if you can read it because I think it's backwards, but it says, "I do not fear death," and it's just like this ridiculous, ridiculous character with like an egg yolk on her shirt. <laughs> I got it at a. Was it Anime Boston? Yeah, I got it at Anime Boston. And then when I went to Otakon in DC, I ran into the same lady again selling her shirts at the booth. <laughs> so that was that was kind of fun. They really do get around, huh? I suppose if it's your living, it's your living, right? Anyway, um, today... Today, we are going to get past this investigation that I stopped last time, right? And we're gonna talk to Best Girl. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna talk to Best Girl. Hell yeah. Uh. Sorry, I can't help it. I like her a lot. Um, maybe we should go... So, I ended last time after playing for like, what, like three? three hours or something like I was tired and my brain wasn't working anymore um, but we still have weenies is the thing that comes to mind here which makes me think that perhaps perhaps we should revisit the detention center ah oh, darn maybe not we'll write and go you want to eat the weenies together No. Even someone as worldly wise as me doesn't know everything about everything, Nick. So I, the great Maya. And it's sad to say I can't tell you much about this object. <laughs> but... But weenies. Alright, so maybe not. Gumshoe, are you sure you want me to do more weenies? Okay. They don't allow presents for the person of the detention center. Hey, you're right. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm coming in to get it to her somehow. Lawyer, not delivery boy, Gumshoe. That's good. Okay. So really, the main thing we need to do is figure out how to get past uh, past her Cyclox, right? And also, if I remember right, the guy's in here anymore, right? Right. And we already examined this. Read it already. Okay. Uh, we looked at this before. Found the thing and now it's gone. Something's bubbling away. Hmm. Okay, to the vitamin square we go. Uh, do you think this guy knows anything about about them? Like maybe he saw this at the restaurant? No. Okay. Car- oh wait! The repair bill. The repair bill. I wonder. Not that. 
maybe the maybe the first clue because it was about her head, right? Okay, let's see. The bandage around your head was from an operation. The operation was very difficult. You were hurt badly. Did the injured question have something to do with this? There we go. Hi, <laughs> Yen. Ooh, it is this. It is the car thing. I have here a car repay bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the Cadaverines? Yes, it is. I don't think I ever introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cadaverines have to do with me? Isn't that her last name? Your relationship with the Cadaverines is strong, and this is why. I mean... She is who she is, isn't she? <laughs> Do I have to present her own thing to her? Hmm. How about this? How about her dad? Or granddad, or whoever it is. I know exactly who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? One lockdown. It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family cars when someone pulled out in front of me. Oh, this is how they met. The motorbike or something like that. I don't remember it much. Anyway, I sort of try to avoid it, but. But I took a blow to the head. Bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. So what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with the with injuring the Viola Caldorini, right? I don't know why her last name is so hard for me to say. I don't know what happened to them. They ran away, or so I heard. Ran away? If they'd stayed, I'd have... <laughs> hmm, is it possible? Could the person who committed the hit and run have been... Furio Tigre? It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Taker. I refuse to believe it. But the motorbike, though. We collided the motorbike and my car. But Don Tiger isn't injured at all, is he? It was the tiger who caused Viola to crash. I can feel it. Plus one of her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him, too. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini. But I have proof that the tiger was involved in a traffic accident on his bike. D do I? What do I have? <laughs> well, I mean, this thing paid by... No, that's not... That doesn't have to do with his bike. The wheel guard is all smashed up. That seems good. Um, I just want to make sure we don't have anything better. Yeah, I think, I think the scooter is the right thing here. It's not exactly a motorbike, but Mr. Tigre rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini. You know the truth, don't you? <laughs> this repair bill was paid by Furio Tigre. The Caterinis have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps, somewhere inside me. I know that might be true. I knew it. But Don Tigre still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Half a million, perhaps? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure. 
should back off. Well, anyway, it was the tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tigre told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? How dare you, Phoenix! Do you want to know what I think? I think the reason he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. I don't know who... No. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, Who does he have relationships to? He's the head of the loan company. Lisa Basil, maybe? Or, I mean, it could just be the this guy, right? The granddad? Because he's brutal and horrible, apparently. But we're pretty sure that Tigre was meeting with... with them. With Glenn. I... Mm, I think it's the granddad. Matches found an use for advertising found lion and tender lender. It wouldn't be John Armstrong, right? Found a tender lender. Not that, that, eh. I, I, I'm gonna go with my gut. Let's go with the granddad. Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but... Your grandfather, Bruto Katarini, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation costs, but... If you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Katarini, do you think Mr. Tigre would have paid the money? One million dollars. That's, that's an expensive operation. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. And when I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been too big. They said the operation costs one million dollars. Uh, uh, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tigre to pay one million dollars in compensation. Compensation, huh? Underworld Link for paying money to settle the score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. But a million bucks? This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. Yeah. It, it, I, I think I see what, what's going on, I think. We know, here, from this, right? Like, this MC Bomber, like, 100,000 or 500,000. Like, I think he wanted to use the computer program to ransom money, maybe? Or sell the program on a market to make money? Which is why he needed it from Glenn in the first place? Which is why he killed Glenn, maybe? I don't know how, if the restaurant is involved in this at all. Like, the, the debt is half a million dollars, which is one thing. So I guess if you could get the debt money from from Armstrong, as well as the money, like half of it, from selling the program. Maybe, maybe something something around that. But that would, that would pin it all onto, uh, onto Don Tigre for this, right? But Viola... Viola's probably an accomplice, right? Because it was a waitress we saw who poisoned everything. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tigre said. It had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadaverini. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me, not about my grandfather. Oh no, we made her cry! But I knew that wasn't really true. 
Why, why are we making best girl cry? I'm so sorry. <sighs> what you did to get the money was... It was... evil. <laughs> he said it was all for me, so I... I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here. Take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. She's crying. Violet's medical papers. A $1 million bill for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. And the messed up court case that he was impersonating Phoenix Wright for was last year. Maybe he's impersonating us to get cases to try to make money or something? Wow. That's so bad for Viola. It's inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and betrayal. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. Is everything all right, Nick? We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else. So I guess I can get rid of this. Poor Viola. Impressive desk on one impressive rug. Solid gold. What's it like to sit at a solid gold desk? Wow, I'm completely dazzled. This is completely dazzling. I can see up my nose in the reflection. This will be really distracting. So the desk isn't practical. No surprise there. That would be so heavy. Even if that's just gold plated. Like, isn't gold super heavy? Ooh, do, 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 do. Okay, uh, let's go back to the detention center. Damn. I want to give her the weenies. Uh, how about the kitchen? Nope. Okay, how about blue screens ink? Did she have anything unlocked? Uh, she does have things locked. Okay, let's save. Also, cranial surgery costs a million dollars. Cranial surgery costs. A, crani a craniotomy, a surgery to remove a brain tumor, can cost anywhere from $30,000 to $100,000. That's not a million dollars. The costs of skull base surgery in the pediatric population. The average operating room costs for resection were $13,114. The costs of brain surgery, awake versus sleep, $46,000. $64,000? Yeah, that, it's a, uh, you know, a bit, a bit, uh, blown out of proportion, maybe? Believe it. All right, let's see if we have all we need in order to uh, to break on through to the other side here. Glenn's troubles. What kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? Um, Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg show up something to do with this? Let's throw this out as a stab in the dark. No. Yeah, no. Actually, wait, haven't I gotten this right before? Yeah, I, I know I got this right once. I just have to remember what it was. Uh, Take 
No. Oh wait, it's the ticket. Duh. All right, hold on. Let me restart all this. I remember now. Reload time. Also, how was everyone's day? Because I went out for um, I went out for dinner with uh, with a friend of mine. I was originally gonna get a burger. I was like this close to uh, like door dashing in some Five Guys, and then my friend texted me, and she just really wanted to vent. <laughs> about like all the stuff that happened from like her Christmas through her New Year's and whatnot because she went on a on a wild wild ride <laughs> with a lot of random stuff but the dinner was good I had um like three days ago, I had a dream about drinking wine. Like that's literally it. All I did in the dream was just I had a glass of wine and I was just drinking it. Entire dream. No idea why. No idea what spawned it. Haven't had like a glass of wine in months. But uh, today I got my glass of wine. And it was good. I also had a... Uh, like... Um, duck... Duck confit pasta pasta or something it was it was pasta with duck and squash and some other stuff went on it was pretty good we went to like a fancier restaurant a lottery ticket ton of these on the victim's table victim let's see if i know how to gambling habit didn't he everyone dreams of being rich even i listen to millionaire radio mr i was gambling wasn't restricted to the lottery was it What could it be related to? So this is the lottery, so it's not related to that. Right? Um, I think it's... It must be like horse... Is it a profile, maybe? There's no betting here, right? Wait. Could it be like... Related to the crime ticket? Everyone likes to gamble from time to time. Yeah, no. Wasn't restricted to the lottery. Meet with the tiger. That's not actually gambling, that's just how he gets his money. You don't gamble. Loan contract. You can't really gamble on a restaurant. Uh, job listings, no. Magazine clipping. Sports paper. I mean, the sports paper is the only thing that makes sense to me. Like, he must bet on sports, right? Be careful, you got it. You could lose everything. I'm missing something. I I must be missing something. thrilling of your life, right? That, this isn't it, it's just... Okay. Uh... It wouldn't be... Lending money? No. Okay. Alright, I, I don't have what I need. There's, there's something else that I need about Elg. Look at this mess. Looks like they're all betting tickets. 
There it is. Kind of betting tickets. For betting on which horse will win a given race. Oh, his drawers are stuffed full of these. There we go. This many tickets will get you what? A buck done for a cycling center? I didn't know you were so hard up that you tried to profit from the dead, Nick. Just taking them as evidence, Maya. Okay. See, I thought maybe the horse thing would do it. But okay, okay, we got this. I think we can get to the last part. His troubles have something to do with this. Lottery ticket. Okay, ready? Everyone likes to do that, but he wasn't restricted to that. He also enjoyed betting on horses. The lottery, horse racing. He bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. Gotta have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Oh, she's sweating. Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps? No! You are right. Glenn did have a gambling habit. Two good people must not follow his example. Do you understand? Trust me. Even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars? Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? He died. It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars in the end. But that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elg's real problem was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Uriyo Tige, the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender Lender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Like you're one to talk. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean about Mr. Elg. You think Glenn had something to do with this Furio Tiger? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really? Because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tigre knew each other. Right here. Furio Tigre. Tigre, aka the Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk to him about would be his debt. It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000. No, it's scratched out on the sports paper, isn't it? But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Maggie gonna get a bit of that good luck. Okay. So the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was the plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What well, computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work close to cracking her. The program in question, was it by any chance this? Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No! Yeah. Got it. Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with the gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep, and he tried to keep his head up above instead of going under. You mean he was in debt? Yes, a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. One hundred thousand dollars crossed out MC Bomber. Mm-hmm. So, he said he was taking on some extra work. Something a bit risky. 
<laughs> Risky, how? Maybe you was gonna become a waitress at Trapian? <laughs> Where do you come up with these ideas? I think he was making stuff for the tiger. So it's safe to say that Mr. Ugg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way, of course, but still a genius. That reminds me of, um... Uh, does anyone remember the name of the MySpace virus? It was like one of the first big Ajax viruses. I have, um... I have a book... Uh, a book called, like, Ajax Security. That goes over it, and, like, its implementation and whatnot. Sammy, the computer worm. JS Space Hero. Yep, this one. Which, uh... This one right here. It, uh... It would just display, but most of all, Sammy is my hero on a victim's MySpace profile page. As well as send Sammy a friend request. When a user viewed that profile page, the payload would then be replicated and planted on their own profile page, continuing the distribution of the worm. So good. Sammy Kamkar, the author of the one was raided by the US Secret Service and the Electronic Crime Task Force in 2006 for releasing it. He entered a plea agreement on the 31st of 2007 to a felony charge. The action resulted in Kamkar being sentenced to three years probation with only one computer and no access to the internet, 90 days community service, and fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in restitution. Computer viruses are like interesting to read about sometimes, I think. That um that Ajax security book I mentioned is the one where I've read most about them. But they're they're neat sometimes. Like uh there's that one dude who wrote the ransomware that like doesn't actually want money. It only unlocks if you manage to beat like one of the Toho games with a high score. And he locked his own computer with it and then couldn't unlock it. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars in the black market. Inconceivable! Gumshoe was right for a change. This date, December 3rd, that's marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for paying his debts. Hmm. I guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore. Use the trash can, Nick! Funny. Okay, I think we've gotten all we need out of her. Although she's open to talking now, it seems. So maybe I can show her stuff? No. Okay. Her, uh... Her I don't want to talk about stuff is really long. I don't know how much I want to bother her about everything. Oh. So really, even though we've unlocked her, she doesn't want to talk about that stuff? What about, um... Do we get any more info if I ask her about Glenn himself? It's a top program, I would say he was a genius. Yeah, okay. We, we've seen that last time. That he's a loser. Okay. Potentially worth millions of dollars, huh? So Don Tigre stole this in order to pay for that. Right? Like, that's that's the obvious answer to all this. Oh, new stuff. Hey, bonjour. I have been waiting for you to return. Mr. Armstrong. Ah, good timing. Hoping to find you here. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, this fella. Oh, pff, wrong voice. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, this fellas. Ah, it's Zinyoop. Who you calling Zinyoop? Ah. I'm glad he spelled that out, so now I know how to say it. Come on out from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. What? You just want to play games with me? I recommend that. The medical papers. Now! Uh-oh. I think he wants to buy a look at the Avrini's papers back. Y you mean... This? The million dollar medical papers? Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. 
Forget about it. That goes dumber than an eggplant. You just want to know what's sad? I'll tell you what's sad. It ain't only a face. She thinks she's got power because she's Buddha's little girl. Now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court, I'm going to expose what you did to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that? Two. Eh, uh, we, we, we. Mr. Armstrong? Forgive me, this way. I cannot argue with him. I just got beat up by a Frenchman. Oh, it hurts the pride the most. Is that all you've got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. W wait. Don't take it too hard. Phoenix, right? That was so stupid. Shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were quite all evidence. Blech. Dies from cringe. Hold it, pal! Oh, hell yeah, gumshoe! Yeah, fight one gorilla with another. D detective you think you're gonna stop me, copper? Beat it! Cow. Wait. Here we go. Cow. Cow. Wow! Come on, Gumshoe. Keep it together. You guys, get out of here. Leave this guy to me. But. But, go pal, and take this. If you get hurt, who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? Oh, all right, thanks Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. On to the trial next. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow. In court! Tender Lender is going down. Are we inadvertently causing the death of this man? If he's unable to, like, repay those bills? There we go. See, it's a good thing that I stopped last time when I did. Because my brain was not working in the right way to know to, uh, you know, do what we did earlier. Sometimes you just need to sleep. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie. So, what do you think is gonna happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well, and it on a giant mystery. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Hmm? Oh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, of course. I saw that. A little flash of doubt in your eyes. No, that wasn't doubt. That was, um, determination. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. How did you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Yeah, remember what Mia taught you in all the other games about smiling. Here, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me that you don't remember this thing. Hmm. I don't think of it. That doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. This is a small bottle that turned up in Trabian's kitchen a couple days ago. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. Not so many, they're overflowing under the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. Hmm. It doesn't smell. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So? What is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's, uh, medication. Oh, it's his ear medication. 
Yeah, for years. Topical use only, apparently. For years? You mean... Yeah, it's the medication Glenelg was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glenelg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Armstrong stole it. Hmm. Found covered in unidentified fingerprints in the kitchen. They're Armstrong's. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Ah, <sighs> someone screwed up. So I had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but, uh... Hmm. It's gonna weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal. This is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today. Got it? Today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done. Or my name is in Phoenix Wright. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claimed so witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony is played with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet, the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Godot. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You gotta change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. Who's our first witness? Oh. The person who's effectively under orders of uh, the real killer from Tenderlander. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone! I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and head chef of the Trebian restaurant. Enchanté. Forgive me for asking, witness, but... <clears throat> are you a woman? Oh, la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am the pert and pucky gentleman, no? Uh, um... On the day of the incident, you were in Trebian's kitchen. Isn't that right? Please, you answer. <laughs> Everything feels right. <laughs> wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate the guy? Nope, gay sex doesn't doesn't blink an eye. He doesn't give a shit. As long as he has his coffee. Your testimony, please witness. Please tell the court what happened that day at Trebian. Hui, volunteers. Really, the the creepiest thing about Armstrong is how like he has so little sclera. Like this is the white of his eye right here. That's it, and then everything else is just like a milk dud. That's like the most disconcerting thing about this man. When it all happened, not then? Mm, your accent is slipping, Armstrong. When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with the new art decor that day. Like having a large meal between the tables, for example. Hey, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. 
he would have seen everything in reverse, no? Uh, mirror? Cui, un grand mirror, la most enormous mirror. Well, this certainly sounds like leading the fucking witness. And suddenly the mystery disappears. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm, that would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. No, it wouldn't? No, it wouldn't. How would that explain a physical coffee cup? No? Holding the cup like this gets it on that side. Like, what, what? No. No. And if there was a mirror right here, then what, like, how would we, what? No. I, I refuse your evidence. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? I do early in the morning for this to be happening to me. No, then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Where is this mirror now, buddy? Oh, pal. Press. First off, we know that's wrong. And who were the two customers, exactly? Nice, of course. Long young man who died. And the other, not so young man. Mm, you are referring to yesterday's witness, I presume. But what about the other man Maggie says she saw at the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? I guess I'll just try a different approach for the time being. You were experimenting with art decor? How come I never heard about that before today? You are not familiar with the language of interior design, Monsu? Please stay on topic. Now why didn't you tell the court about this before? But I did, just a few moments ago. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned, are you referring to some sort of decorture? No, no, art deco. Deco, it is a style of design, your honor. He's talking about interior design. Walls, ceiling, carpets, that kind of thing. Ah, oh, yes, of, of course, that deco. I was trying to achieve a more le ephemeral look from my restaurant. I was planning the most bored remotely in the decor. Mirrors do help open a space, that is true. Like if you have a mirror, like a big mirror on the wall at like a restaurant, it does make it feel like the place is bigger. Between the tables. Then he wouldn't be able to see. Uh, what's the angle of these mirrors between the tables? How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Oof. Something about four meters wide and uh, about two meters high. He wouldn't be able to see past it. Four meters wide? Your restaurant isn't that big. Let's see, four meters about one yard. Holy glass in a frame, that's huge. You couldn't get it through the fucking door. I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Was there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. My, no. But I decided not to go through with it in the end. Should I do? Should I have some more with the mirror or not? Yeah! If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Beard Bird's testimonies. But, but... You didn't ask, right? You've only yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What? A mirror was delivered to Chebian the day before the incident. R really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. And as it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. This just doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to Trebian, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Heh. <laughs> you want to doubt someone, Trite? Look in the mirror. I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Hmm. So the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. Hui! Perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. No, he was looking at the waitress's ass. 
normally I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. <laughs> normally? How's normality come into this? That's lame, Trite. Even for you. Hmm? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible? Is that it? Where does that leave the... Oh, where does that leave the porky-headed lawyer and the top-knot chick over there? And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here? Whoa, Trite. Ugh, not the hair! I do not have a top-knot! <laughs> Mr. Godot is correct. A lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Bien, logic has won the day. The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. He would have seen everything reversed, no? Is this where it's wrong? Did he see anything that wasn't in reverse? Everything? He would have seen everything in reverse? Hey, hey Nick. You should take a second to think about what old CD said in his testimony. How did he phrase it again? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. Which is his left ear. Yeah. Even if you saw that in reverse world, it wouldn't work, right? It was his left ear. He used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. He saw everything he described reflected in the mirror. Then everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right, huh? And that clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess. Or does it? Ha! <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe everything's the fault of a mirror, but... You think old CD saw everything through a reflection? If he did, explain all the contradictions in his testimony. But that just makes the situation worse for Maggie! That'd be something in that old man's testimony. Just gotta dig deeper. So it's gotta be this, right? Old man testimony. I broke the vase at my seat. No. I, I still don't... If everything was on the left... Then he would, like, I can't get over this coffee cup. Because if you held this with your left hand, the stain wouldn't be on the side. It would be on the other side. We also have a picture to look at. Also, like, the prescription is clearly about the left thing, right? So, where's that picture? Shoot, I didn't mean to. His left hand. That's clearly his right hand. I'm gonna present the coffee cup. But apparently that's not it. The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. The prescription, though, says left ear. And he put it in his left ear. Cup, earpiece, glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse. The victim's ear medication. It's not this, right? Like, it couldn't be. Actually, before I reload. 
The old man wasn't looking at that. He was looking at Maggie Bird. <laughs> yeah, I know that's not gonna work. Aha. Uh -huh. The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse. He broke the glass face in his seat. So, we said that the old man was here, right? So, if he looked over... Or looked this way... I don't... No? No. A mirror between the tables. Does the photo help us at all? I mean, this is on his right side. The cup is on his right side. No, that's not it. I mean, unless I'm, I've got the wrong thing to present on. Or just two customers in my restaurant. We can't... We can't prove this yet, that he was there. Like, we know that there's a connection that he was meeting him. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, no, that, that doesn't sound like it would work. I was gonna say, maybe we can present this? Saying, meet with the tiger? But that doesn't prove that, like, he was there when he died. Like, it, it doesn't, doesn't do that. So that won't work. Um... something in the old man's testimony. I mean, he wears... He wears it over his left eye. So if you saw on the left, then it was the right one. Like... The coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear without a doubt. So, to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw that as a reflection in the mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactamente. You see, Monsieur, now that you think about it, it is not so hard, no? Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in the mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Order! Order! Mr. Wright is correct! If the witness genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, then we would expect the victim's eyepiece to have been over his right eye. Yes, Kudo? How bitter. Trite. You should have, you should have a taste of this bitterness. I'll calm you down in no time. But uh, are we talking about your coffee or something completely different? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How... how he thinks? You remember this, I presume. The I broke the vase sorry apology but <laughs> I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony? Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit. Other than throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. What's the most striking thing about Mr. Elg? Clearly, it's the victim's earpiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elg's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece in those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. 
Oh, yes, they are both on his left ear, do you hear? His left ear! <laughs> well, trite. That's the worst, but best impression of Kudo ever. Well, I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. Kudo's good. Enough! Must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? <laughs> Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on. Tell the court. We're all ears. Hui, I can explain. Please, if you will look at the plans of the restaurant. Hello, is everyone sitting comfortably? Lemire, it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two abs. So he couldn't see the tiger. That's why he thinks there's only two people in the restaurant. There's only one seat from which you could have seen an image of the victim. That was the seat of the tables next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. Uh huh. After the terrible incident occurred, I moved Lemire so it was not in the way. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Oh, we know that's wrong. We have evidence against that. Hmm, I see no problems just with the explanation we have just heard. From the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little coquette I am, confusing all the men like this. Don't worry about it. We can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. Ugh, I hate that guy. You said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Yes, of course. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you please. I don't even want to press. I just want to, I want to present. Because we, we've got him. We know he stole the thing. But, I'm going to press anyway. We might learn something new. So, run this by me again. The mirror was here, correct? Oops. Hui. Hui. Really? Because I know if I were you, I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would be in the way. <sighs> Look who's talking, Trite. Huh? You're obstructing my view, among other things. <sighs> But, but, this, this is my seat in the courtroom. Trabian's charm is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. Temporarily placing a mirror in that spot would hardly be in the way. Unlike you, trite. I tell you, Monsieur, the mirror was there, in the middle of the restaurant. There's only one seat in from which you could have seen the image of the victim. And where would that be? Oh la la, look how you lean towards me. I always attract the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. Mr. Armstrong, to the court where you know at once. Uh, I attract the old ones too, you know. Handsome, shall I tease you too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've already seen a very hot someone, so I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. Are you dating Francisca by chance? Because you have matching hair color. I bet she... <laughs> I bet she has mocha cream skin and cappuccino perfume. Then I will tell you. There was the only one seat from which you could have seen. That was the seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. So why can you only see the victim from that particular seat? My monster is obvious, no? If you look at the plans, you understand? The victim would have been reflected in the mirror like so. If you were sitting at the table next to him, you would have seen everything, no? Well, that's the seat old C was sitting in on that day, when the poisoning happened. The old man was sitting at the table next to the victim? Why does that seem kind of odd? Because the vase wasn't broken? After the terrible incident occurred, I moved Lemire so it was not in the way. 
Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? Hui! <laughs> Exactamente. I carried it at the restaurant, son. That fits through the door? You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself? What can I say? I know how to pick things up, Anson. That that was actually a good line. That that was I'm impressed. This man's pickup game is strong. Godot actually laughed at something. Well, given the witness's physique, I suppose it is possible. Did you move anything else from the crime scene, Mr. Armstrong? <laughs> I look like the obliging type, no? But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Bullshit. Your Honor, what do you think- oh, Really? Really? The lottery ticket, then? We know- We know that he took a ticket. Are you sure about that? I touched nothing except the mirror. Mr. Wright, is there something the witness has said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I just can't put my finger on what. Ha! <laughs> Suffering from a case of heartburn, trite. Oh, I was just a thing for that in the oil of golden man, frankincense. Add a few drops to your coffee and voila! Enjoy- Ew! Ew? Ew. I know those are spices technically, right? But ew, no. Focus Phoenix. That's pretty strange, though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. <laughs> you think someone would have? But Maggie didn't, and he did old CD. Then the only logical explanation is that there was no mirror inside Trebian that day. I'm just gotta prove it somehow. Okay, I think we can... We can kill that. Because he broke the mirror. Or, not mirror, sorry. He broke the vase, right? And that vase was fine there. And you can even see it there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So either that picture is it, or um, where's his, where's his testimony? Yeah. Your Honor. Mr. Kudo's words yesterday strongly contradict Mr. Armstrong's testimony. This is a letter of apology that was written by Mr. Kudo, is it not? I realize it looks useless, Your Honor, but this is still testimony. <laughs> guess useless people are only really good at identifying useless things. What relevance does this scrap of paper have to the trial, Mr. Wright? Mr. Kudo's testimony is actually very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honor, because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist? <laughs> Sounds like you're describing yourself. Trite. If the defense would please clarify its statement. Point on it. Right here. Right here. There's one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there's an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not in fact sitting at the table next to the victim at all! Don't be an idiot, trite. That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly! There's only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Tre Bien that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon Dieu! Don't try to confuse the court, trite. Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase, while the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary. In his own words, I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in the ear in which he couldn't hear? Ah, I only got one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, Trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? I can answer this. I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you gonna be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Godot's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Was he not actually there? Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. Mr. Kudo made a mistake. The ear doctor made a mistake. Or the victim was a phony. Uh... What do you mean the victim was a phony? <laughs> I mean, he could just be wrong because he's old, I guess. Is, is that what our argument is? That he's old? The ear doctor making a mistake seems unlikely. Don't you think? Like... I want to say Kudo made a mistake. Clearly, Mr. Kudo made a mistake. Mr. Trite, you're the one who brought up all these contradictions. And if you're trying to tell us the old man just made a mistake, we're going to wrap up this case right now with a guilty verdict. How about it, Mr. Wright? Should I just declare your client guilty? The best you can come up with, Nick? Sorry. I thought we were going for simple. This seems absurd to me. I believe we're looking at this the wrong way. It was actually the doctor's mistake. What? <laughs> what? Yes, the doctor got the wrong ear. Well, I believe we saw an autopsy report yesterday. One that stayed the victim's left ear was ruptured. Okay. Unless the ear was ruptured... Was the eardrum ruptured on purpose? Hold on, let me see this through. No, no, that's... That's not it. Wait, so it's this last one? What, what, what do you even mean? This case is riddled with contradictions. If there's one very, very simple answer that clears them all up. But what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. <laughs> what? Yes, the victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glen Elg at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elg. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left ear drum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. What? 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 What is this? What? Is anyone else, like, not following how the hell we got to that? Like, what a leap in logic. Quiet, Gramps. Why don't you clear out of here, huh? What did you say? Right. Are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. Someone pretended to be Miss pretended to be Glen Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Get real trite. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was... The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. It, it's so hard to believe, but... 
There was one, and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. That's very elaborate. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's store was a fake as well? It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. Who knows what was happening? Th that's right. Well, witness, if your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Oh, la la. This is most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trebian that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. The defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain, in detail, the events in the restaurant that day. Oui. The victim, Monsieur Elg, he came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arriving not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word, he won the lottery. Mon Elg became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. No, there was no time for a phony to do lie acting. Just so we're clear. There was no mirror in the restaurant, after all. <laughs> Je vous demande pardon. Forgive me, Yana. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have just done is committed perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. Oui. In bed. For now, we will hear your cross-examination. Mr. Wright, if you please. Mm. Took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be a more serious trouble after this cross-examination. Hmm. Will he, though? Again, we have that meeting for the calendar. But I don't think it proves anything yet. Though, does it mention a time? No, it just says meet a meet with the tiger. Also, time of death is between 1.30 and 2.30. Was he alone at his table as well? Me? I saw him from the kitchen. You wouldn't be able to see anyone at the, from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Trey. Yesterday's witness also testified that the was alone. We have established that the old man is a shit witness. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? It's not coffee, it's love. Love that's bittersweet. Hearing Maya says that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. No, it doesn't. By old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? Hui! He comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special. I'll give you that. Worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You're most welcome any time. I said it was worth one sip and nothing more. So old Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. What time was it? Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Huh. No. Huh. I cannot remember, Monsieur. Hmm. I believe you were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 by a kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? That incident happened about 20 minutes after you arrived. Oh. So the victim must have arrived between 2 and 2.10, no? No. Just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, Monsieur. You're wonderful. <laughs> I can't sit here all the time and do nothing now, can I? The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. 
Holy monster judge, everything I do, I do it for you. Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? Ha ha ha. Well, at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. The old man arrived just after two. I mean... Ooh! Every Monday at 1.30, you say? Hmm. Suspicious. Are you absolutely sure about the time? When I think early on, I'm sure it was just after two. <laughs> it's the time I stopped serving the lunch menu. Quite right. I was break for lunch when the restaurants are serving their specials. I've been known to wind up a case early just to make it on time. <laughs> I guess you should never give to a hungry judge's lunch. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. Witness, get on with your testimony, please. There were no other customers. So your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim. How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Trite? You never catch me drinking the same blend twice. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant, but you're wasting your time. You can't cry in bird seed to make coffee if you catch my drift. But there's a hole in this testimony somewhere, I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm. He couldn't have gotten word. Because it, it happens at 1.30. Did you see him? No. I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, Yes! I have a million books! Presumably the defendant heard that too then, correct? Maggie? Huh. She looked like a poor little frightened dove. And what about Mr. Kudo? <laughs> the old man choked on some bird seeds that got stuck in his throat. Hmm. It seems we now have yet another incident on our heads. I'm gonna keep pressing on everything, because occasionally we get an achievement. <laughs> what were you doing at this point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, monsieur. Sorry? What do you mean? There's the renowned chef, John Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. Clarice. Hey, I was writing a poem. An angry tale of a chef and half a million dollars of debt. Cooking for a man who won half a million dollars on the lottery. It is called Pourquoi. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for the court? Please don't. No, there was no time for the for phony to do la acting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. Doesn't happen, my friend. I'm afraid I've finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> what do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. <laughs> that must be the show mom. I was listening to. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Hey, hey, I'm sure of it. I remember perfectly now. I know it was that time because I had just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, right? If you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30 p.m. And it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It, it's on the air at 1.30. Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it, when it was announced that he had won. And yet, I don't believe this cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. No! This victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum. Catching a show that was already over. There's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter, acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Trebian that day. The real Glen Elg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony Glen Elg, acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It, it, it certainly seems that way. I mean, <clears throat> that wasn't the case. 
How could you explain the time discrepancy? They got the time wrong. Quite a performance, Trite. You were almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony elk is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain then? Where the real Glen Elg is? He's meeting with the tiger? But the, I'm assuming the tiger is the fake Glen Elg. I don't believe I have to throw this out for the court, however. At that time, the real Glen Elg was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Thank you, Trent. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The missing corpse? It was just in the kitchen. According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. If that customer was the phony Glen Elg, then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? In the kitchen. The, the prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Ye yes, your honor. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Evidence. What's with the intense pressure in your lungs? The ear medicine, maybe. In the kitchen? Thought I had it with that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body the real uh, Mr. L concealed? It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside JBN. <laughs> Interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court of on the police plans, you're on. Blah, 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 blah. The exact location where the body was hidden was. Although there, this space is really small, but I'm gonna say in the kitchen. The body was hidden here. Ooh, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was in this location? Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No. No, no, no. I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only lose, use the very best bottles, monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trebien. Eh? Quoi? But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. Wh what kind of medication? Sure everyone remembers, don't they? Then Mr. Elk visited an otolarin oto otolaryngological clinic and was given medication that day. Man, that really <laughs> ruins the flow. You can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Elg. Pleh. Glen Elg's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen, at which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? Monsieur. Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. You were sitting here up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. No. Order! Order! This is an extraordinary development! Quintus, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenelg? Never! I could not do such an horrible thing. We know one person who could. No. <laughs> Mr. Godot! 
The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? Then I like to do the same thing to the person who liked me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in your ear? My H deficit friend. Chef de Montpartin, please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. Por favor. Yo hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong. And por favor is Spanish. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? No. 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 Absolutely no. I simply... Uh... Let's hear it. You got one shot. All right, Gramps. Witness! The court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Guido's coffee mug awaits you. As does my gavel. Qui. It is clear. What do they always say in the movies? Got a bad feeling about this? Very well. Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. The confession. That's probably a lie. Will he implicate the tiger? That is the question. It is true. I ate Labotti in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with them because uh, there was a reason why I could not refuse. But I did not kill them. I swear it. You must believe me. Okay, the, I don't think there was a lie there. You were forced? By who? I, I cannot say. Or I will be erased. Let's try a different question then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? There was, uh... There was another man. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. Did you carry the body by yourself? Oui, I carried them. I carried Maggie too. Maggie too? When she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. I could not leave her there. But why did you hide the bodies? A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. What man? Who was he? No, no, I cannot say. I fear for my life. I'm really scared. I just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. You won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? And what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? You know, Monsieur. Yes? Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment? A maiden? A bit old to get away with that. A bit too male. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So I just had to prove it. With evidence! But I did not kill him, I swear it. You must believe me. So, you're claiming that all you do is hide the bodies, is that correct? Oui, that's right. If we are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. Also, you're a fucking accomplice to murder. Sorry already confessed this much. Might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Then suck it to him, Nick! Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I didn't realize that we wrapped around. Stop. I, it probably doesn't matter which one we present on, honestly. There was a reason we couldn't refuse. 
This. You have a half a million dollar debt, don't you? Half a million dollars? Is that true, Mr. Armstrong? Oui. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I was weak and I borrowed the money. This is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you. By this man. A half million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. Please, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong, the tiger. You told me I was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand the payment to that repayment is loan. Whether that would be the repayment for the loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body and the inconscient Maggie out of the dining area and into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. Hmm. I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison in the lottery ticket that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it, I was... I was not. It is despicable. Mr. Godot. You will summon this Furio Tiger as witness. I doubt that can be erased today, so we will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Does he have him? 30 minutes. Holy shit, Godot. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. How the... Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could so go either way. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Tiger Tigre is ready to take the stand. Until then, court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. Is he dating Violetta too or something? How how the how does how is he doing this? Unless Gumshoe arrested him the other day for trying to, like, murder us. Okay, uh, I need to know how much more of this trial there is. Um, so what I'm going to do... Is, uh, hold on. Where is it? Uh, trials and tribulations. Which, which one is this? Is this episode four? No, episode three? Yes, it's three. Um, okay, here we go. I, I found it. Testimony of the confession, which is what we just did. I just need to know how much more there is. Okay, uh, there's, okay. Okay, the the next bit is uh, is the end, and it's the um, like it's it's his it's tigers tigers what whatever the fuck, uh, it's his stuff. So there's it is only one more section. So I will keep going. So we're finally gonna going to see the tiger on the stand. Almost got this case one now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? <clears throat> when I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what, we what he testifies is the truth. You mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know. 
Or if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're gonna need. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe? What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair is standing on end. Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black, little miss top knot. It's not a top knot! Never mind about the hair. Let's calm down, alright? Hey, hey. I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I'll, I'll get wound up. Ugh. No kidding. You know, something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Yeah, you want to get the fingerprints? For the for the bottle? Yeah, I'm going to take a jog back down to the precinct. I get some prints and lights for you if you got an hour. An hour? The trial will reconvene by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. You said you could get some fingerprint analysis done in an hour? You bet! In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? Take that. Take that. You're going back to the station anyway. Can you find out whose prints are on these? Oh, uh, hey. That's a small bottle I gave that to you this morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we solved the last mystery of who the prints on it. Of who the prints on it belong to. Sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me too. Okay, I'll get the I'll get this off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. This is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys. Yeah. So I guess this trial is going to take another half hour, right? What would I mean? <coughs> Mr. Quido, you find this Furio Tigre. I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job. No problem. T tamed him? The guy's name may be Furio Tigre, but come on. He's pretty lively. Be careful. He still bites. Very well. Please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. Um, <clears throat> witness, please state your name and occupation. Go, go. Ah. Don't hide under the table, Maya. Unless there's room for me down there too. I uh, um, would you mind? What you say is to me? N nothing. I I didn't say nothing. Honest. Who could have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? I got business to take care of, you hear me? So who the hell called me to this hole? Was it you, Spikey? <sighs> no, of, of course not. It was... the judge! Your Honor? Oh dear, I uh... I seem to drop my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings as normal. That's it. We're doomed. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What do you say? There's no point in struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauled you in. Ugh. T too cool. Don't let him get the better of you, dick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch the courtroom dramas. Of course. Well, <clears throat> perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. <laughs> Phoenix right. You was the one who set this up, didn't you? You was gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Get a grip, Nick! <laughs> the tiger's alibi. Oh, we got evidence against this. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all of my time in my office. I got wheels lined up to borrow cash from Tender Lender every single day. You just wanna check my alibi? Just ask for your letter. Ah, 
At last I found my pen. <clears throat> Very well then, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. What is it? Please, witness, and you could refrain from shouting out like that. I know the kind of games that kind of blue plays. That lowlife ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details until he wins. Lowlife? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bill you $50,000. And you was gonna borrow the cash from me. Uh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. And don't think it's gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. <laughs> I love a good spectator sport. J just a minute. That's really not. This witness is. <laughs> how can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side. No bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You you do not. You better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. You don't you have a scooter, Tiger. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of witness testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You could do it, Dick. Come out from under the table there already, would you, Maya? Do you think there's an achievement? Like, press on every single one of his things? Dave. I, I gotta know. Is every press actually a penalty or what? I don't buy that you haven't even heard of the incident that occurred at Trabian. <laughs> He's got a big mouth, right? Trying to say I was in on some mob pit? Is that what you were trying to say? Where's your proof then? Uh, evidence, yes. Well, for an attorney to make an accusation in court, he must have evidence. That's from loan shock to lawyer, a beginner's guide, yeah? Ah, I see you're the studious type, Mr. Tigre. Very good. Heh, <laughs> why don't you ask him some? Why don't you ask him to represent you sometime, Trite? What should I do? Press hard or leave it. I guess we'll leave it. Th this this is something to leave. I really want to know though, um, if there's an achievement. Um. Oh, neat. Nope, never mind. Uh, I just looked real quick to see if there were any achievements. Uh, there's not, so let's not lose our uh, our head over this. Okay. I was tired with business. Spent all the time in my office. Okay, it's it's this one we want to press on because this is the one that we know isn't true. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Are you talking about Viola Cadaverini? He writes everything in my schedule there. December. Mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. That seems like a rather hmm, sketchy schedule. Ugh. There he goes again. Hmm. Well, the tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder, so now what? Mr. Tigre, what you want? Eh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end trite, and you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day, too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. Never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats who wanted to do business with me. I ain't never seen that young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Uh, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tigre, 
the court asks you to add that last statement to your testimony. <laughs> Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, Your Honor, and ask him yourself. Never saw that kid before. Where is it? Mr. Tigre, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elg, but it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. <laughs> what? Mr. Elg left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. D December 3rd? That's the day of the murder. So, Mr. Tigre, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glen Elg. Because on the very day of the incident, you met with him. Now we have to establish that he met with him at the restaurant. <laughs> not bad! He was actually not bad! Sorry? I was just messing with you to see how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad! That's one compliment I can do without. Plus he's lying through his teeth. Um, <clears throat> witness, please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. You was calling me a liar. Is that what you doing? Uh oh. So you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth? I said I'm dead serious. You just better believe that's the truth. Eh. <laughs> then I'd say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tigre. Oh, yes, would you mind indulging the court, witness? Never actually met the victim? That's gotta be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. I ain't no liar. I never met Glenoak. There was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. Set up a meeting with the guy at my office, tender lender. I waited around for him, but he ain't never showed. I ain't never been, I ain't never ever been to that trade being joint, you see? Hmm. I see. It all seems perfectly logical. You would arrange to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. Or it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You will be beginning your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. The bill's going straight to you, Wright. Shouldn't I go to Godot? He's the one who hauled him here. So this is where Gumshoe's evidence would be useful, right? Do we have anything that shows anything about this at all? Like, doodles in the victim's handwriting. I don't think any of that. Oh, wait. I never met Glen Elk. Then why do you have MC Bomber? Right, because we found that at his place. So that seems like a good bit. Matches used for advertising found mine and then oh wait oh this proves he was there before didn't he say he wasn't yeah that's it that's it Mr. Tigre is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? <laughs> what are you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. What? If you've really never been to Trey BM before, what was a book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You've been snooping around in my stuff now, too, wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no bra controlling me. Order! Order! Well, witness, 
I think it's time you start telling us the truth, don't you? Sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. I ain't no pussycat. I don't go back on what I said. But okay. I was at the joint that day. What? But listen good, alright? I might have been there, but I still never met that kid. Well, well. We have the MC. We have the disc. Looks like an order just came up for another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Oak that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. He's so orange. <laughs> I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door of the joint, I saw one ugly scene. Guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be. So I split. I heard the cop signs on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. Mmm, no. Not before you took that disc. I see. You can actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it. Don't wait around here any longer. I ain't, like, I ain't gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Heh. <laughs> no problem. Anytime Trite presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. Mr. Godot, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Yes, sir. Special Express ain't cheap, right? Just so you know since you was paying. Oh man, doesn't it rule law me anything around here? No, this is Kangaroo Court. I'm supposed to meet the kid in the rest of the afternoon. When I opened the door, the drain I saw one of the scene. The guy was laid out on the table, stiff as concrete. I figured the place wasn't hot already, it was going to be, so I split. I heard the cop signs on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. See, I think it's the straight back to the office part. Because we know he took this. Wait, really? Not this? Hold on, well, well let's, let's see what, what do they say when I mess up. It does. I don't see anything contradictory. Oh, nothing. I was thinking we were going to get like a big angry noise from the tiger. When I opened the door of the joint, I saw one ugly scene. You couldn't see that from the door. I'm just saying. An ugly scene? What do you mean? The witness has already told us, Trite. Which makes that question irrelevant. But... You couldn't see the victim from the door. I limited myself to 17 cups of coffee during a trial. That's the rule. You better limit the number of times you take a penalty, Trite. Or your guts will look like the inside of a chimney. Ashen. Don't make me burn you again, Mr. Wright. Figured the place was hot already was gonna be, so I split. Okay, I guess let's press him on this instead. You went straight back? Did a bout of guilt suddenly hit you for what you did? <laughs> what are you trying to say? You trying to tell me you ain't never been guilty of nothing? Um, we all have our crosses to bear. We all have to swallow the dark secrets we hide. Like this! Courtroom's not exactly the place to talk about dark secrets, is it? You've done it again, Mr. Wright. Really? Yeah, seriously, how would a penalty for those two jokers? Well, Nick, what do you think? We're running out of ways to avoid the truth. You need to press him fast for his time to figure out. Gotta come back right back with a contradiction. Well, yeah, obviously, but what do I even have to contradict him about? Supposed to meet the kid in the afternoon. That's true. 1.30 is the afternoon. So that's not a lie. Open the door of the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The 
This is from the kitchen. Is is this it? Like you you enter through here, you can't see. Present it. You can't see it. You're something of a lone collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. T Gray? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. And no one escapes the Phoenix's clutches. Thing is time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you are standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. No, he wouldn't. There's a wall. Isn't that what I just said? It's on the back of the kid's head. Okay, now he's lying, for sure. Because you, even if you can see over that, you can't see it because he's bent over. Unfortunately for you, that's not possible. If the court would think back, you remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. That too. Well, that's true. Now look back at the plants again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Trey Bien, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with him. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. But the defense just proved that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenelg, but a fake. What? In order that Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted on a charade. That will do. This trial has gone long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glen Elk, and then impersonated the victim in a performance for Victor Kudo? In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. It's Violetta. No, it's Furrier Tiger. Like, who else could it be, dude? Obviously. The killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness? <laughs> now that's cute. You think you could pin this on the tiger? Maybe you just don't understand. The tiger is king of the general. So I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts? You can't threaten, threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's the defense. I wouldn't tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. He's got guts, I'll give you that. M Mr. Wright, not leave me head. Do not leave me to handle this alone. Huh. Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Godot! Let's just go back over Mr. Godot's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see the victim. Oh no, no. Seringo brought him a job at Gino, but she supposed to be in it. No question about it, she very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the accused put the poison in the coffee. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffee. Very impressive, Mr. Godot. <coughs> Waiting for my absence to launch your attack? Heh. <laughs> Found your pen at last, tripe. He was in my pocket. <clears throat> but anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenelg, and the waitress from before, from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. We know that Maggie was unconscious from uh, the chef's testimony. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glenelg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean, the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Yeah, they took off her clothes and wore it. What on earth was it? 
Who was this waitress that Mr. Godot witnessed? She said she helped. Sorry, Viola. Who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cataverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. You was making a big mistake. You know who Viola's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had kind of a cackling laugh. She's not creepy, she's cute, damn it. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Beard seems to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real and once for show. And, Mr. Furio Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime is you. I'm waiting for him to, to roar. Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. Go! Go! Sorry? You's alright. I could do with the guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I don't have to charter a jet to get me to my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about? You's got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you's missed out on one real important thing. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid too. But I couldn't have poisoned him easy, yeah? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Heh. <laughs> what a troublemaker. Tru troublemaker? Looks like we're gonna need another one for the road. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. They should sell, like, a brand of coffee called Hot Testimony and just have a picture of Godot on it. I don't even like coffee, and I would buy that. Indeed, witness. You explain yourself to the court. You one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Trapium between yourself and the victim? Yeah, I loaned out cash, about $100,000. That day we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yeah, what? Half a million bucks. You got lucky, you know? Feel lucky. If that waitress had done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elk was $50,000. Yeah, well, you has got the big to take into account. It just builds up fast, you know? Big? Faster than fast, $100,000 is twice his principal. It's like college loans. Now, the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. Got that half a million just in time. So I ain't having no reason to kill the kid. If I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? He has to have one, but what is it? Oh, that's so easy. So easy. Why would he need a million dollars? Hmm? Maybe, well, are we supposed to prove the motive now, though, is the question, I guess. Potentially worth millions of dollars. And Viola's medical bills. I feel like I should press him a little bit. 
press him on this. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at the time? No, that's... Maggie and Rainbow with all this. So the victim had to repay you from his lottery winnings from the beginning. Seems that way to me. But you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Heh. <laughs> the undying belief that your next role will end the worst losing streak you ever had. So it defines a true gambler. Makes it sound so cool. Don't be tempted, Nick. You don't got the willpower for it. All I know is the kid got took a shot and he got lucky in the end. The waitress, you mean? The girl with the glasses and the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? She hadn't got in the way, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over and done with. I just push a little bit hard about him. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back, that's all. I'm a businessman. It's all coming together before that waitress got in the way. What was I can tell for the witness testimony? Other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tiger had no motive for killing the victim. Witness! You amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. The tiger's motive, huh? Here we go. Here we go. He has no reason to kill the guy. Mm. MC, Bomber, and Viola's medical bills are the main reason. Let's go with MC Bomber first. So you just intended to get back the $100,000 Mr. Elgo do, correct? I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were really after. Objection. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would a money lender be after other than money? Well, <laughs> the money lender was after money. But money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, your honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wrecks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? It plays video games. I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is an important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. S several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elg had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elg was a programmer. A highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. L put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program? Exactly. <laughs> the witness may have a poor fashion sense, but he's by no means an idiot, trite. A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tigre need money to the tune of one million dollars? In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident. Weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter in which a young woman was hurt, was injured. My brain. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Uh, how, how much is this to use? No. These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. And yet when the repair when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. W One million dollars? Preposterous sum. Someone should sue those HMOs! Oh, this game dates itself. Ah, no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got one of it, the hospital would end up dead as a morgue. 
But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. Order. Order. Order! You say his life depended on Mr. Wright. Indeed it did. Simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did, did you say Cadaverini? Bruto Cadaverini. Mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta. Also known as Viola Cadaverini. What if Godot is like the son of this dude or something like that? And that's how he got the tiger to come in. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the $1 million Bruto Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glen Oak's life to pay your debt. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigre's sole intention was to get his hands on the CD. Glen Oak had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tigre knew it. But, then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly! At the 11th hour, Mr. Oak won half a million dollars in the lottery, which left Mr. Tigre in no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So we resorted to illegitimate means. That... That's crazy. He murdered Glen Elg, and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tiger posed as Glen Elg. While Violetta Ca While Viola Cadaverina played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing, in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Gudeau. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept in the dark about it. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Gudeau? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigre's plan. Order. Order! Silence or I'll clear the ru <laughs> You just put on a good show, Spikey. If you just want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dress up like that kid? Create a witness and frame someone? If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. Him pretending to be us is gonna come into this as like his acting career, isn't it? I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You, you do? Despite your appearance, you're very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Beard had no way out. Bird side. What? Another one, Mr. Wright. Yeah, he pretended to be me. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Trite? What was this trick you say Mr. T.A. performed to frame the accused? I, it's this, isn't it? Unless there's something else. He made the weenies. Made a cardboard and painted to look authentic. I mean, he pretended to be him. Yeah, it's got to be this. Right? Right? Out of, out of liquid. <laughs> he just keeps drinking. And what's the relevance of that trite? Uh, so just a little intro. An intro into what? 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 That's not it? Don't have to do something sloppy. 
one more trick to make sure Maggie Bird wasn't found out. Um... What did he do? Took a photo? The apron? Oh! Right! He framed her! Found during a body search of Maggie. The ticket, right? Right? Like, he, he framed her? That's... That's what he did? Am I... Am I stupid? Like... Oh... Why are you like this? Okay. Um... Let's... Let's go back to the thinking board. Okay. I'm going back for the other route again. If... I, I guess the newspaper article doesn't matter. So how about we go with the other piece of evidence that said that he pretended to be me. What on earth is that? There it is. What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tiger, eh? <coughs> You didn't just pose as the victim of the day in question. A month ago in this very court, you pose as me. What? That's... That's... The truth. But... The witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you standing in here this very court a mere month ago. The fierce fright who put on the most disreputable, shabby display of defense I'd ever seen. Ugh. You proved that, Gramps. Proved the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Ooh. Mm. Hey. Hey. Forget about it, yeah. I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You, you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, sir? This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, trite here in court, we deal with people's lives. <laughs> Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor, speaking for myself, I'm absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I presided over this court as the judge with the vested power to hand out a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by memory without evidence to support it. If the defense has no further evidence, the course will not excuse the witness. What? What? Fuck you, Judge. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tiger are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But you come so far. You say he impersonated Glen Elg. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. I have Violetta's confession. And probably the bottle that's about to come up, right? Is 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 Gumshoe gonna come in? Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled. He's got that. All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. But I was so close. He's getting him to admit his own guilt. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. If I just had one more piece of evidence, one more piece of evidence, and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. This witness's cross examination cross examination is over. You're free to go, Mr. Tigre. Oh, 
Hold it. Your honor, sir. Wait! D detective Detective Gumshoe? Sorry I took so long, pal. I... I... I staked everything on this. I badged the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. What? What is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. Wh what? Wait, do we not even get to see the guilty defendant thing? Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? But the prints, pal! For this medicine bottle. Oh, so? Do you know who the prints belong to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know! So, tell us! The tigers, right? I knew it! <laughs> you bet. Clear as crystal, all over the bottle. The Furio Tigers paw prints are, right? That's great! We've got him now, Nick! What's wrong with you? Probably said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. Laid everything on the line for this, Nick? I know. Look, I'm sorry. Kinda hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? Why? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is the irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glenag's coffee. He admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. Shit, did I give him the wrong bottle? Oh no. Was I supposed to give him the 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 brown one? Don't be so hard on yourself. The last chance to help Maggie. I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's all right, a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um, Detective Gumshoe? M Maggie? You been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you did do it. No detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry, I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Is there anything we do now, Nick? Wish there was. Oh, she worked so hard to get that evidence. Only there was some way I could use it. A am I screwed? Did I give him the wrong bottle? Really, though? Well, no, this one has Maggie's prints on it. Never mind, the, the, this has got to be the right way to go. Yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you can prepare this decisive evidence you discovered. Um, yes. <clears throat> Don't keep us all in suspense, trite. Show us. Naturally, we can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? Ain't been no, no court before. But you lawyers show know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know you can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really back in the corner here, but maybe, maybe if he thinks he got me beat. I let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Here you go. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor. Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interestingly new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigre. What? But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains, except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. 
My prints are on that pansy looking bottle? <laughs> is that what you're saying? What the hell's in it anyway? Time to lie. A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and a phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. It seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Mr. Tigre, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will pr prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide. The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, Your Honor. The victim killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tiger, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? No objection yet from Godot. <laughs> Make a good clown, you know that? What? You just ain't never gonna get this to stick. You just make me laugh now. You think it a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? A straight see. I can see straight through you, Phoenix, right? That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no, this is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger, you're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown, and it was made of glass. This man just proved he knew what that looked like. The cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it. Yeah, and how do you know that, buddy? <laughs> Got him. At last. Wood. Why is everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle the cyanide was in. But you just ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that go to looking zoop. Fool you people, that lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out. Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the po potassium cyanide was in. Yeah. Yeah. But just now you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Yeah. Uh, you just don't know who you's messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars in the black market. You just think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure. The last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you. The biggest phony of all. Uh, oh! Angry tiger noises. <laughs> What's going on? While the bailiff speaks. Looks like a blackout. <laughs> well done, Trite. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. What the fuck? Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Now then, how are things going, Mr. Tiger Kudo? He's being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glen Elg, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. It's very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre is a truly frightening criminal. Eh. Yeah. A truly frightening one. 
There's a defense attorney over there. Really? Because I think the most fucking scary thing about all this nonsense is that we go through all this bullshit in the court, get him like all the way to the point where he's like, this guy did it. Look at all the signs point to him. And then the judge is like, we can excuse the witness. Oop -a -doop -a -doop. That's the scariest fucking thing about this game. Good dog. Well, I'm not in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. <coughs> not guilty. My throat is ready to die. Let, let's wrap this up, please. <coughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Mr. Wright? I... 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me on that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. And that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick. In the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh. Guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Wait. Detective Gumshoe. Uh, uh, yeah, congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I, I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh. Well, uh, I was... I well, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. Wait up, Detective. He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. Thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe is just running on in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. Clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie, I'm gonna give her the weenies. You know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you all through this. I wanted to believe that, sir. But on that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. Gotta prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. Give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. The million dollar lottery ticket. <laughs> Here you are. Present to celebrate your freedom. Th that's a present from Detective Gumshoe. Made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. D Detective Gumshoe. I, I actually really like weenies. You know. Did, did you guys hear that? Pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? Yeah. The, the weenies of justice. So how is it, Maggie? It's, it's really good. <laughs> Beautiful. So, the case of Phony vs. Genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Dating the world's poorest cop. Recipe for Turnabout. The End. Episode 4, Turnabout Begins. Oh, we, we get to play with our good buddy again? Alright, let's save our progress, and then I am... Dead for the night! <sighs> Excuse me. Cease, please. I... Okay, here's, here's your preview for next time. The girl, let her go. Nice punchy perm.
Mia? Oh, he's watching a movie. Fugitive data. This is cool. Terry Fallis. Or Terry Fowles. He looks so noir, right there. Great. Also, this mix. Are we playing as Mia again? Is that what's going on? I think we're gonna end up playing as Mia again. Neat. Okay, give me the, uh, there we go. Yep, we're playing as me again. Alright, I'll throw the safe out there. Might rewatch that beginning thing next time. Just because that was, that was a cool little intro for that. Alright, here we go. So, that's it for tonight's stream. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I know we went a, a bit later today, even though, uh, well, we went late on all counts, I guess, because the stream's... 20 minutes away from being three hours long so it's longer than usual also we started later because i had japanese class tonight so didn't start until an hour after i normally do so if you're all if you're stuck around with me this long thank you <laughs> appreciate you all um but that was a good end for for all that and the tiger is off to go to well the tiger probably viola and uh armstrong are probably all going to jail because they're all accomplices to murder or murderers. So, sadly, sadly, the girl that I really like is gone. What a bummer. But, um, yeah, tomorrow is Thursday. Uh, I will not be late tomorrow, most likely, because my friend informed me that she's not going to trivia tomorrow, and my other friends are in Switzerland who normally go. So, I don't have a ride to said trivia event so i don't expect to actually go tomorrow so i will probably be online like at the usual time and we can probably i was thinking i'd continue elder oldest scrolls because that was pretty enjoyable last time and uh we'll do some more pixelated boss fights it'll be a lot of fun at least that's my plan anyway so hope you all have a good rest of your day rest of your uh let's say rest of your life <laughs> good rest of your day rest of your night and uh i'll uh i'll see you all later bye for now